Hello, I'm Maria, the founder of Four Season Foraging, which is a Minneapolis-based business that teaches people to safely and sustainably identify and harvest wild edibles. And today I'm here to talk about Nanny Berry, which is a fall fruit that's native to this area, to North America. And we're going to go check it out. And hopefully you can find some in your area and try it out yourself. Okay, so this here is the nanny berry shrub. Um, and it's something that you may have seen before and not realized what it was. It is planted ornamentally, um, not super frequently, but you do find it here and there. So here it's used in landscaping. Um, in the wild, you'll find it in more of a like wetland, lowland area. Uh, but in the city, you're most likely to find it, you know, planted. So um, some distinguishing features of nanny berry are the opposite leaves. So I'll show a close-up of this later so you get a better view. But the leaves come off like a V, one directly opposite each other. And there's not a lot of trees or shrubs that have this identifying characteristic. Usually they're alternate. So there'll be like one leaf here, one leaf there, one leaf there. Um, so opposite leaves and then the terminal bud is really distinctive too. The terminal bud just means the bud at the very tip of the twig. So it's, um, it kind of looks like a bird's head. So there's like a, the head and the beak of the bird. And this shrub nanny berry is also called crane's bill for that reason. Cause if you use your imagination, it kind of looks like the head and the bill of a crane. Um, and then the berries themselves. So unfortunately, right now, this tree has no berries on it because they're eaten probably by birds or maybe by animals or humans. But the berries grow off of these uh, twigs here. So this is, you can kind of get an idea of what the arrangement of the berries would look like. And they're these small, maybe like a quarter inch long, dark blue, almost black berries and they kind of have a weird like shriveled raisin appearance. Um, and they're really unique as far as berries go. They don't have the juiciness of like blueberries or raspberries or strawberries, for example. They're more of like a pasty consistency. Um, so more along the lines of a prune or a date. Uh, but they are very sweet and very tasty. And I definitely recommend trying them if you haven't. So um, yeah, this is the form of the berry cluster here and in the spring it makes these pretty white flowers um they're little tiny little i think five petaled flowers and it's quite showy and that's part of the reason that they're planted ornamentally um and it's in the viburnum jesus <laughs> sorry it's in the, in the viburnum genus um so Viburnum lentago is the Latin name of this plant. There's other viburnums that look a little similar, but they won't have the crane's bill or the same berries. Okay, so here is a close up of the nanny berry twig, which I promised you. And you can see that the leaves here are opposite. So there's one coming off directly opposite the other one. And then here's a closer view of that crane's bill. <laughs> so if I kind of spread the leaves here, you can see it a little bit better. Kind of looks like a head of a crane. And then I'll also do a closer view of the berry clusters. This is where the berries would be. Um, so yeah, there's just one single berry that comes off at the end of each of these. And again, they're blackish bluish color shriveled and have a pruny kind of taste and consistency so we have three nanny berry shrubs growing right next to each other here one there one there and one there um no, that actually might be two different ones no it's not never mind um <laughs> so these are all nanny berries here and you can see that they get this nice reddish color on the leaves in the fall um, the leaves that the, the colors that the leaves change to can also be used for identifying characteristics because some of them turn more of a yellow, some more orange. Um, these ones are more of a red maroon kind of color when they, when they turn. So 
very pretty and also identifiable from a distance. Um, so it's around this time of year that the berries ripen. So right now it's mid-September. Um, usually when I come through here, even later in the year, there's still tons of berries on here because of the dryness of the berry. They stay on for a long time and stay good. They don't ferment like the more wet berries do. Um, but for whatever reason this year, they're picked clean. So, um, too bad for this video, I guess, but <laughs> I'll splice in some pictures from previous years so you can see what they look like. So start looking for them around like early September. Um, they ripen around that time and you can just like eat them right off the tree. They have one kind of large seed in the middle that you can just spit out. Um, or you can take it home and process it through a food mill to remove the seed. And what you're going to want to do is um, gather the berries and put them in a pot with a little bit of water and get them cooking and then put them through a food mill while they're hot. And the reason for that is because the pulp is so thick and has so little water that it's really hard to run through a food mill if it's cold or if it's raw. So definitely want to use a little bit of water and heat those up when you're running it through a food mill to remove the seeds and the skin. Um, and then what comes out is like this thick paste that's almost like a prune butter. You can take that paste and put it on a sandwich, a cookie, a muffin, a scone, anything like that it'll be good on. Um, or you could, you know, put drops of it into your oatmeal, your yogurt or granola. Uh, there's lots of uses for it and yeah, I encourage you to make your own and find out some new uses. Maybe make like a kind of date bar, but instead you use, instead of the dates, use nanny berry, a nanny berry bar. That sounds really good. Um, anyway, so yeah, try it out. It's awesome. Okay, thanks for joining me in this video about nanny berry. I hope that you learned a few things and that you're inspired to go try it yourself. Um, if you like the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell for notifications. You can also go to my Patreon. The link is down below in the description box and sign up there to pledge a dollar amount every month to help me keep producing these free videos. Thanks again for watching and have a great day. Happy foraging.